Hello and welcome back to the channel today, catching up with episode nine of Shogun Crimson Sky. That's probably one of the best episodes of television that I've seen in a very long time time. <sighs> if you haven't watched this episode yet, go back, go through our library and go check out Josh's channel because half of the episodes are over there and make sure you're subscribed because after he gets back from Jordan Con, we will be covering the finale. So the finale. this episode starts off with everyone en route <sighs> to Osaka. And essentially what this episode hinges on is the fact that Crimson Sky, Toronaga's big plan, it wasn't a battle. It wasn't, you know, cannons. He was using Mariko as a weapon and weaponizing her want or need, I guess, for committing seppuku, her getting that chance to die a honorable death for something that she's been wanting and really weaponizing that for his own cause. I hope I explained that <laughs> in a way that makes sense. I especially love your callback to Mariko's desire for vengeance, because that was something that they talked about in episode seven, I want to say. There was, it was a pre, a couple episodes ago. And Toronaga was, and, you know, Mariko was basically, you know, sad and she was crying. And why can't I just die? This is bullshit. And Toronaga's like, surely you figured out that your father, like, married you off to Buntaro on purpose so that you could survive and, like, avenge him. Surely you figured that out. He never told you? And she was like, no. Hey. Reinvigorated with glorious purpose. Yeah. And here she does. She marches right into Osaka and starts throwing grenades. And I love it. She, I mean, this is the Mariko episode. I mean, this is, it's the climax of the story, but it's also the climax of her story. And it's yes. really bringing her character to the forefront of this entire series, which, I mean, of course, like the actress is incredible. I, I, there's so many things that happens in this episode where I, I had to tell myself and remind myself to breathe. Like I was like jaw clenched <laughs> watching this entire thing. And they just, they left you on the edge of your seat. And as soon as you think that it's going to be okay, they pull the rug out from underneath you. and. If they don't want win all of the awards for this series, I don't even know what to say. It's just that good. This episode was that good. Yes. Yes, it was. Well, what did we do? We started off with Johnny B getting dressed to Ishido again. Yeah. And uh, Yabashige is like, oh, yeah, you know, okay, you got to bow right. And you got to don't, don't say anything. And they like, you know, prepping for that. And then they show up to the thing and the, to the meeting. And one of the regents is like, hey, what's up, buddy? You know, trying to like shake him down a little bit. Yeah. The they, Catholic, they... the Catholic region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They get into the meeting and Yabashige's like, look, I brought you guns and I brought you the Anjin and he's a he's a good sea captain. See, I didn't betray you after all. And Ishido's not having it. He's like, Yeah, whatever, you're a you're a dick and I don't like you. Um <laughs> <laughs> but like you, you kind of get this feeling of futility right from the beginning, right? But both of them <laughs> are just sort of like infant infants. This whole scene that takes place in front of the council, in front of the entire, I, I, I would assume, all of the lords and ladies yeah. in Osaka. And when Mariko walks into the room after Johnny B and Yabu are kind of like waved off, like, okay, go sit down. <laughs> I want to, this is just kind of surface level, but maybe not. The costuming for Mariko was just aces. But yeah. something that I noticed throughout this exchange, and I think it was reflected really well through the costuming, is like what she was wearing. You know, like, have you ever heard of like the, the revenge dress? Like if a girl breaks up with her boyfriend and she oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some, yeah, like it, she was wearing the outfit where like you walk into a room and it's like she is that bitch. Like everyone's eyes are going to be on her. The color palette, the white the red lips, like the black and red undergarment that's under her kimono. On one hand, she looks amazing. She looks incredible. Right. But on the other hand, 
it was like a status thing in my eyes where she walked in and oh, well. she kept dropping in, you know, I will be leaving, you know, I'm sorry, I can't hang around this poetry contest, but I will be leaving. And she invokes the name of her family lineage, like a thousand years of samurais and her family, which is really just finding the chink in Ishido's armor because he's a peasant, yeah. right? So she's like lording over his, her family's name over him <laughs> in this incredible garment, just looking so yeah. regal where it was like all of the punches were just like, oh, she hit him high. She hit him low. Like everything that was happening, everything yeah. that she was saying. And then when she drops the bomb of I'm free to go. And so is, as is anyone here. Yes. And it was just, oh, like, <laughs> well, in, what, what a speech. And up until this point, you've got Ishido who has largely maintained power because he's been holding everyone hostage. Like, right. This is ridiculous. And I, and I love your perspective on that. I, I def, I absolutely, that, that has to be the revenge dress. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mariko came out swinging hard. Yeah. And from that moment has just been dog walking Ishido the yes. entire time. <laughs> just and oh he even there's even a scene later on where he's like you know what what should i do and lady ochiba is like oh i would never tell you what to do uh because you're fucked yeah <laughs> yeah if you keep everybody here then you have to admit that they're hostages and you lose your honor and authority it, but if you let everybody go you lose your leverage <laughs> yeah speaking of Ochiba, speaking of her, Mariko saying, oh, you know, like, congratulations on your marriage proposal to Ishiro. And yeah. then we get that little line from the, the first line of the poetry competition. And I remember the, the, last, the last line of it was something like um, a leaf with no or a branch with no leaves or something like yeah. that. And I don't, I'm sure there's like a really deep metaphor hidden in there somewhere. But the first thing that I thought of is like a, like a, like a naked bare twig on a tree, like totally exposed. And it almost felt like she was saying like, I have you exposed now, the both of yeah. you. Yeah. I, you know, obviously when it comes to poetry, the, the, the meaning thereof is, is, you know, lies with the writer. Right. Um, but for me, that, that scene, cause I like, I like the, the, the key part that got me, which was actually kind of a funny part too, is uh, Yabushige again, good old, good old Yabu <laughs> has no idea. Like it just the veiled threats, just <laughs> like left and right, man, missed every single one of them. And when, she gives that whole speech and everything. And then like, he's like, what are you doing? Are you going to, you're going to get us killed. And, yeah. and Mariko's kind of like, well, yeah, that's the point. Dumb, dumb. But okay, whatever. <laughs> you can cry if you want. And then he's all like pouty and he's like, a, a branch with no leaves in the springtime. What a dumb poem. Who even writes that? And I was like, in the springtime is when the branches are supposed to be full of leaves, full mm -hmm. of life. I got, I got the for for my my point my point on that my or my uh my uh perspective on that was I feel like she was telling Ishido or o Ochiba that this is a fruitless path like you are you are surrounded by you know fertile soil and 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 other things that are growing you will not you are going to be a bare branch in springtime there will be there is absolutely no future I love that and I and I just it, it's it's you know the meme where it's like uh it's Picard and the Klingons like I've heard that humans cannot fight and he says you are free to test that assumption at your convenience <laughs> and then the the, the caption is how to say fuck around and find out with some class that's that yes <laughs> that, this is the version this is her saying you suck at everything you will never amount to yeah. anything 
but with some class. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that just goes back to Mariko's nature as we've talked about how when Toranaga speaks to Mariko a few episodes back, he's asking, what does this woman have against me? Why is she trying to fight me? And Mariko says, you know, like women are simply at war, like men go to war for this, that and the other, but yes. women are simply at war. And Mariko's upbringing, she, you know, like she can fight, she can be a fighter, like physically, but we've always seen her weaponize her words. And I loved how that played out through this episode. It felt like a bigger theme that runs in and out with the poetry contest, with the statement that she makes in front of the Council of Regents and everyone else in the room where she's weaponizing her words. We've seen her weaponize her lack of words to Bontaro. We've seen her... Yeah use what she has in this moment and what she was able to do and what Toranaga understood is that Mariko as a trump card, it's her lineage and it's her words and it's the way that she can weaponize her words to get the outcome that he needs. And Mariko just came in there and just blew the doors off of that meeting. And I blew the doors I, off, really? Really? You had to say that? <laughs> Too soon, Amber. Too soon. I, I keep doing that. <laughs> I keep doing that. It's fresh Too for soon. me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's that layer of dread underneath everything. But on top of that, it's so fulfilling to watch because finally, you know, you're getting somewhere in this yeah. episode and she's really sticking it to Ishiro. And what what a scene. And I mean, yeah. like, as much I would be hard pressed to pick a favorite scene in this episode, but it's between that and her trying attempting to leave Osaka. Look, she comes in in that scene where she meets with everybody and she says, you know, she she basically she exposes Ishido as not really having all the power that he purports himself to have. Right. Um, and then she just basically defies him openly and says, uh, I'm sorry, I can't do what you say because I'm already doing what I promised my liege I would do. So I will be leaving tomorrow. You're, you're not going to stop me, are you? Surely I, I'm not a prisoner, right? And I don't know if he thought she was bluffing. Like, I guess Ishido wouldn't know Mariko that well. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he would. He should if he was smart, which we know he's not. We do get that exchange later on where Ishido's like, she won't do this. She won't do that. And Ochiba is like, she will. <laughs> yes, she you will. You don't know her like yes, I do. She will. And uh, so the next morning comes, and they look, and it's what is it? It's Toranaga's wife and child, right? Is who he's his trying to get. His wife and his consort and the baby, yes. Yeah. So they're trying to get them out because, you know, again, his first son is dead. They're in a mourning period. And Toranaga is very much hitting a pressure point that he knows Ishido is going to be struggling with. And so they load up and they're walking towards the gate and gates, the gate people are like, nope, you can't leave. And she's like, no, yes, I can. No, I can't. And she goes, okay, cool. Um, hey, would you uh, kill that guy for me? When she <laughs> tells, that was one of the most ice cold scenes I have ever seen. She tells her, her guard or whoever it is, like, please kill these men retainer. for me. Yeah, her retainer. And he walks up to <laughs> Ishido's mm -hmm. men bows and then just <laughs> with a one two like that was it just one two and uh, they it oh my so god cold. <laughs> it was so cold, cold cold blooded but so fulfilling but so tense I mean like I was gritting my jaw watching this oh. play out from the moment that the women are loaded into the little right? carriages to oh. the time I mean, that first arrow that takes out her retainer, followed by the oh, second yeah. arrow that lands right by her foot as she's just very delicately shuffling along slowly towards these guards. And the shot where all hell breaks loose, now everyone's fighting. She's she's standing. She's standing there right in, in the, the middle, middle of it, like just 
the the resolve like her <laughs> i can't even find my words but it, again like the way she's standing there reminded me of her in that council meeting because she's not getting sidetracked and she's so resolute in these two moments where it doesn't matter what people are saying. It doesn't matter all of the actions around her. She is just laser focused on achieving her goal. And she is not allowing anything to make her hesitant or kind of like trip up on her words. Like it just, yeah, <sighs> yeah no, um, it, oh, it's amazing. Um, you know, you're talking about, you know, the tension there from the moment they walk out, you know, because you know there's going to be a confrontation. And then when, you know, she sends all her men forward and it's that little battle. And then the, the was that last dude who came up and was like, it has been an honor to serve you. And then the dude kills him. And it was just like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. And you you, you get this very Riders of Gondor headed to Osgiliath you know, for their final st stupid stand where they all just die for nothing. Mm -hmm. And you get this sort of defeated sense. But Mariko, like, the, the, again, with how they shot these scenes, she stands, as you said, resolute, right in the middle of all of it. Doesn't blink, doesn't flinch, doesn't bat an eye. And as everybody around her dies, and then she steps forward and she's like, okay, enough games, I'm leaving. And they're like, yeah. no, you're not. And she's like, yes, I am, I'm leaving. And then someone gives her a Naginata and she starts Look, that, she starts fighting them. The way they shot that where it was just like the close up, she holds her hand out to the side and one of the women shuffles forward, puts it in her hand and then like shuffles backwards. And like oh. my, my heart was in <laughs> like in my throat. And for all of the talk that we, okay, for all of the conversation that we've had about, you know, like her poems and branches and trees, and later she talks about flowers, you know, so yeah. poetic. She's like a tree standing there, like so rooted in the ground, so steadfast. But as soon as that Naginata is in her hand. Yes. Oh boy. Like the way that she, the way she was fighting and like, out of breath and shrieking it it just like it broke me it broke me i was holding back like all of all of the tears all of yes. the tears in that moment when she started like this out of breath kind of like scream that was going on i lost it <laughs> i lost it <laughs> Well, Apparently the actress chipped her tooth during that scene because <laughs> no way yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Not from the I, I fighting either, stories, just from like, like... <laughs> when, when the actor is so into it that they like hurt themselves or or something like that. Like yeah, oh, I always love those. Stories. Yeah, she said her her jaw was clenched too tight, and I was like, dang. Ooh. I mean, mine was too, though. Watching it, right? So, the the ending of the scene where she she addresses everyone on the walls watching down on her is that you know she failed she can't return back to Toranaga so today at sunset she will commit seppuku so heartbreaking and it's you know you get this you have this sense of again again the show has done a really great job of being of not shying away from people you love can die um the death can be gruesome or they can survive you don't know we just don't know and obviously as we've covered before we haven't read the books or yeah. the book but uh in this particular case you don't know like is is she gonna die right here like this is crazy she is she is desperately fighting to the max of cape of max of her abilities which is of course like entirely and totally like uh, pointless because she there's no way she by herself are going to overwhelm an entire regiment of guards like there's just no way so more theater. more theater it is a it is her attempting to the best of her ability to fulfill the the assignment given to her by mm -hmm. Tornaga, right? And and it's and it's like you said, it's theater, it's a public. It's a very public display. And she says, "Okay, well, since I can't, since you have forced me to be unable to follow the orders of my lord, I cannot live with the shame, and I will commit seppuku at sunset." Yeah. 
Oh, oh, oh. I mean, we, going back to the first episode of the series, we have Lady Fuji's husband who commits seppuku after dishonoring himself. Right. And the way that this is used throughout the entire series, it's so upsetting, you know, from like one point of view, because obviously you don't want to see these people killing themselves. And for me, it's like, what? what's the point? I'm seeing it through Johnny B's eyes and it's like, what's the point? And what Toranaga has done so ruthlessly, and some might even say cowardly, is weaponizing these people's honor to fulfill his mission, Crimson Sky, and taking back Osaka. And it's you're really seeing like the duality, or maybe it's not even the duality, but the different ways to interpret the character. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh God, it's just it's so much. It's so much. I like I said, I'm still processing this this episode has I I keep wanting to jump ahead and I'm like, no, we gotta cover. We gotta cover everything. Isn't it hard um, though? Like I, I wanna root for uh, Toranaga, but at the same time I'm like I I I don't know. Like he's he's not he's linear well, in the way that he's when you first see him, he's almost this grandfatherly, like the way he's chatting yeah. with the air and he's going hawking and, you know, words of wisdom to a son and everyone else. And then you get to this episode and you see the plan that he has laid out. And it's like, ooh, like, am I sure? Like, do I really want to be rooting for this get, guy? But I'm yeah. rooting for Mariko and like, I'm rooting for her agency to choose what she wants to do in this situation, but I don't right. have to like it. <laughs> you get a, well, you get a sense of um, with Toranaga. One of the things that I've kind of gained um, throughout the series is, yeah, he's made some absolutely brutal requests, right? He's allowed some insanely brutal things to happen in pursuit of his, plan of his goal yeah and i it just makes me think back to all the times he would say things like i don't want to be shogun i don't want a war i don't want all these things and and i start to wonder if it's not the power and authority that he's shying away from but rather he knows the sacrifices that people around him will have to make and he doesn't want to ask them to make those sacrifices like it has nothing to do with ruling like he could rule just fine like we he he's a very wise ruler it, it's not that at all what it is actually is that there's gonna be a toll and it's going to be the people around him that pay it just yeah. to put him on a throne and he doesn't want them to pay that toll. And now you've got Mariko who is paying a very heavy toll. Mariko, willingly. Hiramatsu. Hiramatsu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even in some ways his son, like, yeah. And his brother for sure mm -hmm. is going to be paying some kind of toll. But the, uh, the thing that gets me with this is you've got this is you know you, we, we get these episodes where they're like character centric right yeah um, a stick of time was definitely centered around Toranaga and everybody's interaction with Toranaga mm -hmm. this one was for that was like that for Mari. yeah and she she talks to Ishido she talks to the guard it's 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 essentially it's Mariko's uh, episode. She even has she a really is, kind of yeah, a heartbreak. Yeah, she thing. is Crimson Sky. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She even has a really heartbreaking uh, moment with her son, oh. where her son is like, "You, you, you got to stop this. Like, we're Christians. Like, come on, let's do this thing." And she's like, "Look, our Lord is Toranaga," and he's like, "Toranaga's defeated. Like, he he's a child. He doesn't understand." that's just how it is and it sucks because like <laughs> as a kid i would have watched that and i'd have been like 
yeah, you tell your mom. She's stupid. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Or, yeah, you stupid kid. You should listen to your mom. And now I'm a dad, and I'm like, oh, man, poor kid. Like, he just doesn't get it. And Mariko can't explain it to him without ruining everything. And she's just got to listen to her son be very, very cruel to her. <sighs> and a lot of people might say, you know, well, she, you know, she she went in there to die. So if she if this is all she has to deal with, um, then cool, right? Like that's that's not that big of a deal. And it's just like, mm, but it is still kind of that big of a deal. Uh, it 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 sucks. If you got to go in and die, if you got to go in and give up your life or something, you shouldn't be heartbroken when you do it. Yeah, no, that's. A, I mean, it's a really good point, and it it's circling back on the opening scene of her pregnant, running through the snow, yes. trying to, you know, kill herself out in the snow, and it's kind of like her Catholic origin story where she meets the yeah. priest and she gets the crucifix but also we're learning about it's almost like this cyclical nature of tragedy and how family can be so much for people in terms of tragic circumstances and how it can be repeated and especially in this time period or this setting or in this you know series what she went through with her family was absolutely tragic and what she's going through with her son now is the same but i have to give it to ishido or possibly ochiba who set up this marriage arrangement between her son and ishido's daughter because oh, yeah. as her son like through his perspective He's like, things are going well for me here. You know, like I'm coming up in the world. Like I'm going to marry this person of importance. And his mom comes in and kind of just kicks the stool out from underneath him and is like, you will marry who our liege lord says to marry. Yeah. And her son doesn't quite understand what's happening. He's too young, you know. And it's really heartbreaking well, to watch. But the way that this has been, this has been weaponized by Ishido is, yeah. I mean, well played. Well, and and he's been out of the loop too, right? He he's yeah. been in Osaka, so he's been listening to Ishido. You know, if you'll pardon the the phrase here, he's been drinking the Kool Aid, and yeah. it's not because he's you know weak minded or feeble or anything like that. It's because that's that's all there is to drink. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally in Osaka Castle being courted by Toronaga's enemies. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a really great little scene. I'm glad that they gave her that because, yeah. as you said, like, this is the Mariko episode, everyone being centered around her. It would be really weird for her to not get time with her son in yeah. this episode. So I feel like even though it's not like the most hard hitting or impactful scene, like it still has a ton of impact and it's still super important to the character. And I think that's another thing that I can say for this series is every scene feels intentional. And as yeah. a viewer, I'm not having questions like, well, that doesn't seem logical. You know, if we would have went this whole episode, I would have been like, huh, like we didn't. She didn't get to see her kid. <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, it's just, it's really the mark of really excellent writing, I would say. No, I agree with that. It's it's super good. And you you almost get this sense of <sighs> Mariko in, in, in all of her interactions. Well, in her first interaction, it's sort of a, you know, to borrow a theme that we have repeatedly hit on. She <laughs> she she tossed the dice in yeah. that first <laughs> scene, right? She did. And the the rest of the episode is sort of everyone else kind of reacting to that. Yeah. And Mariko kind of sitting back and being like, I'm going to do this. Are you going to stop me or not? And she's she's enduring a lot of hits. Like mm -hmm. the, the the retainers that get killed in that sort of uh, uh, skirmish, you know, at the gate, those yeah. are probably people she knew, you know? And she just, again, she stood there, 
resolute. Now she's talking to her son. And again, she knows that this is a ploy. She knows this is a plot, but she can't say anything. And she has to sort of endure that as well. So and guarded. We're going back to the, the hidden heart and the eightfold fence. And the next scene, we see that crumble. We see that wall crumble because, you know, she goes into, well, they, they go in, they're like, okay, it's, it's sunrise, it's sunset. And we haven't been permitted to leave. So we're, I'm doing this. I'm done. I'm ending my life and my blood will seal. My blood will stand as a testament against, you know, Ishido for all of the other people to know that, no, you are being imprisoned here. You know, he, he might've right. had pretty words about it, but you are a prisoner under pain of death. And Johnny B comes in. He's like, let me be your second instead. Yes. Which because kind of the tender moment. Yeah, because the Catholic regent, this rat bastard, doesn't show. And like the implication of that is huge because they're both Catholics. So if she doesn't have a number two, she has to kill herself, which is a which, mortal sin, which she right. even expressed. And he left her hanging like that. And I mean, I, you know, like Howard, that dude, oh. Right. I would I want to know. I don't know if we'll get right. any resolution to that, but I wonder if he was held back if Ishido forced Ooh. him not to intervene or if That's Ishido me. said you don't need to go because I'll, you know, go deliver her. Yeah. message That's... saying that she can leave, but That's a good point. I didn't think about that. This moment where Blackthorn steps up and he's like, I'll be your number two. And he's kind of saying, like, you know, like, I've lived a terrible life. I'm not going to heaven. You know, <laughs> like, I'll do it for right. you. I will sacrifice. I yeah, like, I will sacrifice my soul to keep yours clean, which on one hand, killing someone, like, not a very romantic gesture, but the implication of him doing it so that she can, like, go to the afterlife clean, I guess, I, I guess, kind of. It's, I it's guess. A, well, it, it, it's one of the things that we love about this show, though, because it, it it's like, oh, he's going to cut off her head so she doesn't go to hell. How romantic. Right. After no, he, and he has, from as far as I know, no skills with the sword. So this would be, like, Oh yeah, oh, this I is don't. Not gonna be pretty. That's that's where my first thought went when this was happening because I was thinking back to Tor young Toranaga yes. taking so yes. many swings of the sword to decapitate this one guy, and I was like, I I can't if that if that happens, I can't watch this right. anymore. <laughs> but it was a really tender moment. The second that the screen closes and her family is kind of like cut off from watching her yeah. son, it uh, it was just so much. And again, when Ishido shows up and like. I hate Everything. him so much. Same, same. What is this? More despicable... and more every episode. I hate <laughs> despicable. <laughs> but when he interrupts everything and she kind of like drops the knife and she's just like trembling, she can't stand. And Blackthorn like holds out a hand for her once again. I was like, man, yeah. I'm not, a... look, like I'm not someone who is typically into shows where like there's a big romance theme like i can take it or leave it that's not something that usually draws right. me in but just the way that that was shot like him helping her to her feet and him offering to be her second i was just like oh like i guess i'm a total yeah. sucker for this uh yeah. ship and <laughs> No, they, they came for us there because that that whole I mean, like, and, and that's where I was saying that her, you know, her eightfold fence, like, just comes crashing down like she she is going to commit seppuku. She is going to end it like that's not something this isn't a bluff. It's not a, you know, a game of chicken to see who, you know, cracks first. Ishido comes in and tries to pretend like, oh, what? You can you can leave in the morning. Why didn't you just get your permit? <laughs> and then everybody else immediately falls like dominoes. Oh, can we leave too? Can we leave too? Can we leave too? Yep. He's like, of course you can. You're not prisoners. Just apply for your permits and you can leave. And it's like, you... Hmm. 
You know you what asshole. scared and me I, the most? <laughs> what? I checked the time when that scene happened to see like how much time was left for the episode. And when I realized how much time was less left, right. I was like, oh no, what oh no, what happening? next? What yeah. next? And, I, you know, I, I like this scene because Mariko is obviously not okay, right? But she gets to see victory. She, she has a victory right then and there because she sees exactly what Toranaga knew would happen. And it, it's kind of a cool thing. So, like, she's in a whirlwind of emotion. But I think that in, in that headspace, it'd be nice to see that you're actually making headway. Like, you're, you're, you're progressing. You're winning your battle. And then, of course, you know, we leave. We go back. Uh, to the bedroom for some uh, good night um, revelry. I think in this moment where, you know, they have their one night together after this whole time bickering and being head to head and combative. And yeah. it would have been so tragic had that not gotten to happen, I think. Because yes it really closes their arc, like their relationship, but it's also going to absolutely incentivize and motivate Blackthorn to have to do what, have to do whatever comes next, I guess, which I have no idea what the next episode will be, but now, I mean, like he's always been committed. He's always been committed to her, but in his own way. But I think this is the first right. time that he is, fully like put his needs aside and put his views and you know western values and everything else aside for her but yeah it's just oh i don't know it's it, it was a lot and of course it can't be sh it's totally short-lived because we <sighs> learned that yabushiga sort of invokes this like late stage betrayal that just you know jeopardizes everything yeah. once again and I, you know i love the character of yabushige like the grunts and like the japes and the jokes and the comments like he's a very 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 entertaining character but oh man oh like it, it just it was it was heartbreaking Scene opens up, he's drinking, having a great time, talking to one of the wall guards. And they're like, you know, oh yeah, the women are all celebrating. They're going to drink all the sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then they're like, you know, he's like, here you go, have a drink. And the guy's like, all right, cool. And the guy goes to take a drink and Yabashige stabs. Yabashige actually pulls out the like, hey, look over there. And then you get <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that? Typical Yabu. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what a scoundrel. <laughs> In, when And when I saw the, the hooks, the grappling hooks come over the wall, I was like, I is thought, this Toronaga? I thought for a second it was going to be like Toronaga's men. But also there was that split second where I was like, oh, my God, what if it's. What if it's Buntaro and he like walks in yes. on them in the room together? Like that was my, <laughs> yes, that was like my exact thought. Like, OK. Especially when he like opened the gate and all the people were running in with their faces covered. And I was like, one of these is going to be Buntaro. And <laughs> it was not. Because all I could think about was like, Buntaro is going to be like super soldier for Toranaga going forward. Right. And that totally would have been something Tor Buntaro would have been into. But it just, it was not. It was not. It was, uh, it was just a, an assassin squad from somewhere else. And now Ishido's we have to figure men. out. Yeah. This, I mean, yeah, definitely Ishido's men. And I think, too, this... Okay, so, like, quick rundown. For the most part, everyone important, like, in this group survives. The wife of Toranaga, the child of Toranaga's consort, Mariko, Blackthorn, Yabushiga, they're all in together. Yabushiga is trying to, like, get Mariko captured. 
because they're right. killing everyone else, but not her. They kind of like pull her and they're they're going to imprison her. They're going to keep her captive. Everyone else, right. it doesn't matter. They're, you know, not important. Right. But I loved this little sequence. It went by so fast, but finally getting to see Blackthorn do oh. what he can do in terms of fighting. Because, yes. you know, the, the man is helpless with a sword, but... As soon as he's got like, is it like a flintlock pistol? Is yeah, that it's one of those, okay. one of those pistols, one of his pistols. And also, like when you think of a pistol, like not like a cowboy, like a little pew pew one. Like <laughs> he's using it as a club. Like yeah. he's like spinning it backwards and just like whacking dudes over the head <laughs> with which, it. which was their design, <laughs> by the way. And it was just, I mean, like a club. Like it was brilliant yeah. to watch <laughs> that's that's well that's and that's the that was the design of those things um you would have these guys carrying six guns sometimes and they would always have a heavy pommel on the end well not always but oftentimes they had like a real heavy pommel on the end so that if you were out of guns you know essentially out of ammo you could turn them around and start beating the hell out of people with them you know yeah. or could crack to the skull with one of those old drop someone real quick i i um, loved how effective he was and getting to see yes. him in his element because you know everyone's calling him a pirate all season and although he keeps you know saying like no 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 i'm not a pirate the man <laughs> fights like a pirate like he's he fights like a seafaring man yes exactly exactly but it's just <laughs> i i loved watching that so much yeah. and the way that he's like reloading these quickly and effectively while everyone's running and scattering about and he'll kind of like take a sidestep blow and then like he's ready to go again but the the one scene that got me is where he reaches his arm in through the hole, grabs the guy, brings the head close, and just like John Wicks the guy through the screen. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> oh, I loved it so much. You're you're absolutely right. You know, it was nice. We we were holding out hope that we'd see Fuji Sama. Yeah, wielding some pistols that didn't. There's happen. still time. There's still time. There's still time. Maybe, Maybe it'll happen. Uh, but. You know, seeing Johnny B like just absolutely murk some dudes with the with that pistol is just it's it was such a satisfying sequence. Making their way to you know the storeroom where there's thicker doors there, and Yabashige's like, no, 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 we have to go to the gate, we have to go to the gate. And I love how smart Mari Mariko is though, because she's like, no, I I won't risk getting captured like that's mm -hmm. getting captured is not an option i will die first right. and she has to like if if she doesn't return back to toranaga her part in this mission is to be the martyr to catalyze exactly. everyone else into action and she has teased death she is she has danced with death this entire season you well know? said sir well said oh for her to be as intelligent, as uh, strategic as Toranaga, and to understand those things without them needing to be explained to her is, mm -hmm. is absolutely gorgeous. And for her to understand the finality of her assignment in Osaka, you know, obviously I'm sure Toranaga gave her a pretty good briefing, but only after that hard won sort of respect that that she earned. They're able to get away from the squad. They run into the storeroom and Yabushige is like just shit in his pants because he's like, Oh, this wasn't supposed to happen like this. I was supposed to get her. She's supposed to be alive. She can't be harmed. If she dies, I'm screwed. And do you think Mariko, Mariko knew the moment that Yabushige decided yes. not to help? push that like large box against the door she was like oh yes yes i have 100 okay. i think she saw right through him i think she suspected before because again toranaga said he's predictable he will he will always do you know the easy thing mm -hmm. and i think she sort of suspected like when he was like to the gate 
And I think that's partially why she defied him there, just sort of on an instinct, on a guess, saying, if that's what he's saying to do, I'm not going to do it. Um, even if that was it, even if it was just surface yeah. level, if that's what he wants to do, I'm not doing it because he's he's an idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then they run to this storeroom where these doors are bigger and they can barricade them and... and uh, Johnny B immediately starts running for stuff and he's like, okay, let's, let's barricade. And they listen at the door and they hear something about lighting fuses. Yeah. And it's like, they're going to blast this door open. And Blackthorn is desperately trying to get stuff to pin that door back. And Yabushige is just shit in his pants. And I, I think you're I think you've nailed it entirely. Mariko sees Yabushige for who he is, for what he did, and just goes, It is a good day to die. And and stands in front of the door, does the you know the very Japanese thing and says, you know, I am uh I, I can't remember her family name. And she basically says, I, I do this in defiance of Ishido, in, in loyalty to my lord Tornaga, and just Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I I have not been so gutted. Look, okay, it's the pretty it's the end of the episode. I'm going to make a bold statement, but Okay. I think and I and I hate that I'm doing this too because I hate comparing the two. <laughs> but <laughs> in the entirety of Game of Thrones, we've had episodes where people have always said like, oh, like so much suspense, so much intrigue, so shocking. I would put this episode in terms of suspense probably higher up than even some of the Game of Thrones episodes like Cersei blowing up the sept, like to the point where sure. I was so on the edge of my seat. I was so worried and like intensely yeah. focused on every little thing that was happening. I had to go back multiple times to rewind to make sure that I caught all of the subtitles because I wanted so to be sure <laughs> that I didn't miss a single word. And I couldn't wait to like go back and watch the episode again. Like I needed to know every single line that was said. And the way that she speaks at the moment where she's, you know, killed, it was just a whirlwind of emotions. But also, I think I said earlier, on one hand, you absolutely do not want to see this happen to her. On the other hand, it's her right to do what she wants. She has agency finally in this moment after all of the years with Buntaro, yeah, who forbid exactly. her from doing this. She finally has meaning and doing what she wants. Blackthorn allowed her to do that. I do think it's like a very tragic ending, but also somewhat beautiful, a, even though it's terribly, one. horribly sad. Yeah, and triumphant yeah. as well. But you just hate to see it. <laughs> like on yeah. one hand, it's just awful and terrible watching a group of people weaponize honor in the form of suicide to yes. reach a goal. And it's such a whirlwind of emotions and many conversations I'm sure to be had about this topic, but yes. man, I'm no, I'm no expert on Japanese history, culture. I'm just sitting here watching a TV show and I think it was really, really well done. Oh God. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I love what you're saying about, <laughs> you know the emotional sort of whirlwind because oh man you know i would get up and i'm like oh my god is she gonna die okay good she didn't die oh my god is she gonna die oh, okay good she didn't die <laughs> she's not gonna die they keep teasing me oh my god she died like yeah. like how how does the show accurately make me have no idea what's happening at every turn like maybe it's because i'm an idiot I am a No, I mean, like, I <laughs> I assumed Crimson Sky was going to be something totally different. But 
the best writers in the world can do foreshadowing to the point where you're not exactly sure what's going to happen. But after you watch it in retrospect, you're retrospect, you're kind of like, oh, I should have seen it. All of the yeah. mentions of her wanting to commit suicide, all of the times that that's brought up and as a theme to her story, I should have seen it coming. Yeah. Why didn't yeah. I? But it makes it makes a really a really well done episode. And before we sign off, I want to ask you any predictions, thoughts about the next episode. Oh, you know. I think I think Tornaga has done a great job of 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 exposing Ishido, right? There's a concept in in the in the art of debate where if I'm debating you about something, I don't care what your opinion is in so much as I'm not trying to change your opinion. I'm trying to present my thoughts and my side of the argument in such a way that the audience listening sides Wade. with me yes. over you, right? I don't feel like Torinaga is attacking Ishido to be like, haha, look, I can beat you. I feel like this maneuver was very much to expose Ishido and expose the cracks in his, you know, authority to yeah. stress the different people in Osaka out to the point where they go, okay, enough is enough. I think he accomplished that. And I think in the next episode, what we're going to see is essentially tantamount to open revolt. Um, yeah. And Toranaga is going to show up and basically square off against an extremely weakened Osaka I'd, I'd have to agree with you. I, I definitely think that that's going to come full circle. I think we're going to see a lot of fighting. I'm really hoping that we get to see Fuji come back. She's one that I'm really looking forward to. I also think that there is potential for Toranaga's brother to yeah. do a 180 from the inside and be their inside person within the castle. Yes. I don't know how... Ugh, I don't... I don't know. Blackthorn, I feel like he definitely has more to the story. He's definitely going to be wanting some retribution and vengeance for Mariko. Yeah. I just don't know how he's going to get out of Osaka is the thing. Yeah, that's a good question. So unless there's an inside person, I, I really don't know. Or perhaps we will get to see Blackthorn kind of, I don't know, making his own fate once again. And somehow... Once again, yeah. No, this is... Oh, gosh. So good. Just so good. <laughs> Should we so wrap much. it up? I think that's the best place to go because I, I, could, I, could, I could mouth vomit all day about different things that I want to pick apart about the show. Basically, go watch the show. Go watch yeah. the show and then leave a comment below about something we didn't hit on or or maybe a perspective that you had that we didn't catch. Yeah. You want to tell the fine viewers where to find your channel and what it's all about? Uh, yeah. For Jordan Con. On uh, YouTube.com slash two geeks, one mic. And the geeks has threes instead of E's. So it's 2G33KS, number one MIC. And uh, we've got the geekiness coming out of our ears uh, <laughs> right now. We're building leather armor for cosplay that we're working on for Jordan Con. Uh, at current time, it is April 17th and uh, April 18th at 5 a.m. I will be at the airport headed to Jordan Con. And I am so excited. Um, but if you want to uh, get some updates, you can you can follow me on uh, Two Geeks, One Mike, or you can follow me on Black Tower Podcast on any of the social media platforms, really. And... Uh, we're going to be posting stuff all weekend live at Jordan Con, and we're going to be having a lot of fun. So, so please if you're there, cool. if you're there, go say hi to Josh. <laughs> if if you are at Jordan Con, yes, please do. I always, always, always have swag to give away, so I will have Ooh. free stuff, and it's almost always good too. <laughs> All right, I'll wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe to both channels, and we will see you back next time.